Good morning, everyone. It is 6.30 in the morning, and I couldn't sleep and thought I would come do a bead tutorial for everyone to see about how you can make different size beads by cutting the same length of paper. It's not magic, it's math. Okay, so what I did was I took 12 by 12 scrapbook paper, all right, nothing special, flipped it over, and went up and down the, ooh, the sorry, went up and down the paper and measured a quarter inch on both sides. Okay, let me roll this up. It'll be easier to do it a different way than I thought. I took my ruler, as you see me do in other videos, and so this, let me, what, can I scoot it up a bit here? <laughs> I took my ruler, measured a quarter inch all along the edge of the paper. So I'm taking the ruler and I'm tilting it from the far edge of the paper here to the end here where my first mark is. So this is one quarter of an inch. Sorry, it's a little tough to do this and make sure I'm in frame. All right, so it's a quarter inch. And I just keep going back and forth. So there's the sharp end, then the flat end. You know what I'm talking about, to make the strips. And you just keep going back and forth until you have the desired amount of strips that you want. You get, when you make your marks, you get twice as many pieces of paper as marks you make because you're getting double the double the amount of pieces of paper out of one small space. All right, so then what I do is I just cut all my pieces of paper out. Like I said, this is one quarter of an inch. And yes, I cut everything by hand, except for the beads that I make that are tubular beads. I do not cut those by hand. I do cut those on the paper cutter because I want the ends to come out even. These beads, it does not matter. All right, so I, all I do is I cut the papers into strips back and forth, and these are quarter inch strips, they're very small. And the reason I did a quarter inch is because if I want to make, well, let me explain it later. Let me, <laughs> sorry, so let me unroll this again and show you the one quarter inch beads. So here's all the little one quarter inch strips that I've cut already. And I wanted you to see, whoops, he snuck in there. I wanted you to see what beads would look like depending on how many pieces of paper that you roll. All right, so this is one quarter inch strips. And these are all the beads that you can make with a one quarter inch strip. So I started out making this, I made the first one. So this is one of these pieces of paper and it makes a very tiny round little bead. I mean, it's very small, probably smaller than most of what you guys will want to do, but it's great for jewelry making. You can use it for a spacer bead instead of buying spacer beads. If you want all your beads to look the same, there's your little one right there. All right, so there's that one. This is two pieces of paper, quarter inch paper, rolled the exact same way as one piece, all right? This is three pieces right there. Actually, yeah, this is three pieces and it makes kind of a flattish saucer bead, but it's still kind of fat. See, it's still got width to it and depth. All right, so there's that one. Then this one, I think I put either five or six of the one quarter inch pieces of paper. Now look at the difference. All right, this one here has 12. This is a saucer bead. And this has 12 pieces of paper. This is how you do it. All right, so remember, these are one quarter inch strips. 
So I need one, two, three, four, five, so the bottom six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so I have ten strips of the one quarter inch paper. Where did I put my clip? <laughs> I want to keep them all together. All right, here we go. Let me back you out just a, wheel, a little bit. All right, so what you do is you take, try to see, now sometimes when you hand cup, some strips, even though you did quarter inch, some strips are a little fatter than the others. Put the fattest one on the back. And then pile everything else on top of it. Make sure all your paper's right side up. I've made mistakes where I did one of them upside down or backside. And it just killed me because the bead turned out so nice, but then <laughs> the paper was turned the wrong direction. All right, so what I do is, after I put all the pieces together, I kind of do it on the board to make sure all the ends are together. Now let me tell you, there are several ways you can do this. You know, I have the beading tools. Um, but I don't like big fat holes in my beads because I, I don't put them on journals or anything. I use make jewelry with them, and so I don't need a large hole. But the thing is, is that you can't get that amount of paper in this tiny slit. You might have to get it in this one, and I don't even think it's going to fit in this one. Make sure all the ends are blunt. Nope, it's not going to fit there. So the next one up will be this one. And as you can see, I'm struggling to get it on there. So then the next one up would be this big fat thing, and it's going to leave big honking hole in the middle of my bead, which I do not like. I don't want a bead with a big hole in the middle of it. And we're talking a nice size hole like this. I don't want a big hole. So this is the way I do it. I've seen other people do it this way. And honestly, I think this works the best. Take some toothpicks. Get yourself a toothpick. Keep all your little ends lined up. Then I take the toothpick and I kind of curl it around uh, the paper around the toothpick. Just kind of pinch it over it. And as I pinch it, I'm rolling it once and twice. And then I pull my toothpick out and I kind of wrestle the paper into my two fingers. And all I do after that is I roll. And you make sure these are kind of long and together. And every time you roll, see, I like to roll this way so I can see what I'm doing here with the color up towards me. And so I can see the color with the color strips will look like. So I pull, I roll, I straighten, I roll, straighten and roll. And it gets easier as you go further down. All right, keep going. But you got to remember, you need to keep this kind of in line because you want a nice, a nice, well-formed look that looks consistent. So you're kind of pinching the end and pulling and pinching so that when you pinch, it lines the paper up with this here. I'm going to pull and pinch. All right, so we're getting down to the tricky end. So what you do is, now, you can't do this. Uh, well, I say you can't, but I've never done this with anything but wet glue because that's the way I learned it. You take your wet glue and kind of paint it on the paper, on the ends. Then you take your fingers and you smooth it into a long line, trying to make sure it's nice and smooth because that's the way you want it to go around the edge here. So you take this and you slowly apply it, but don't go so slow that the glue sticks to your fingers too much. So then you take your fingers and you just press it around because you have 10 layers of paper on there. You gotta make sure they all stick and you wanna make sure when you do this that it's nice and tight and you may wanna have a baby wipe or a wet sponge to wipe the dry glue off your fingers or what's beginning to dry. And there you have it, a very flat saucer bead. So you can get a lot of different size beads out of one 12 by 12 piece of paper 
just by layering how many, well, look at the difference between these two guys. This has 12, this has 10, and that was done with the toothpick. It, just to curl it over the toothpick. And you still have a big enough hole, you can put some kind of stuff through there. So this is the quarter inch paper. I think maybe this guy belongs over here. <laughs> so here's your quarter inch paper. This one has 12, this one has 10. All right, so there you go. So you see this one, see how thin they are? Then this is thin, but it's small because the diameter is small because you use less strips of paper. This is a very small and this is a teeny tiny guy. Let me go in. Whoops, sorry, not out. In, 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 in. Focus, there we go. So see? You won't be able to tell much difference between like a three and a four stacked up strips, but when you start adding them up, that's when you're going to see the difference. And the height of your bead or the thickness of your bead has to do with what you start out with, which is the one quarter inch. So that's as high as the bead will be is a quarter of an inch because that's where you started. So these are a quarter inch high and then however much out from here is another measurement. So it's a quarter inch thick, but then it's whatever circumference or diameter after that. All right, so let's try this. Now this is why I do this in one quarter inch measurements, right? So the next one, let me put these guys out of the way. The next one that I cut, because I did my paper in one quarter inch, one quarter inch strips, instead of doing a quarter inch, I moved it over to the second one and did a half an inch and then tapered down to the end, okay? So remember, we're still using the same piece of paper. We're just changing how we measure because we've got the, let me do this. We have the one quarter inch measurement and all I'm doing is instead of, let me turn around this way. Instead of going a quarter inch across, I'm doing half an inch. So I go two, two marks. Wait, can't see that, sorry. I go two marks, that's a quarter inch, quarter inch. And I just put it on a half inch because two quarters equals a half. And I scoot it over make my line and then go back the other way and make sure it's two marks because that equals one half an inch. And then you can make three quarter inch and one inch beads to whatever you want out of this one piece of paper. If you want all your beads to match, you can gradually make them larger and larger in size and yet keep the same piece of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. All right, so these are one quarter inch and these are one half inch strips. Uh, let's see what do I have here. All right, so here are half inch strips, and this is what I got. One, two, I think there's either three or four in there. I think there's six in this one, and there are 10 or 12 in that one. So you can see, whoops, focus, there you go. You can see what one strip of paper does that is a half an inch wide. Then two strips. It makes it a little fatter, but it's still half an inch across. It has to do with the fatness of the bead when you keep stacking the strips on top of each other. See, one, three. All right, I think this one either has four or six. I think this one's four. So then you're going from two or three to a four and see what it does. Still half an inch wide, but it has to do with the thickness, the roundness of the bead when you keep stacking paper on top of paper. Then I think this is either six or eight strips, I forgot. And then that's the last one, see? If it's only one strip of paper, you usually can't tell the difference. Like if you go from three to five or three to six, you'll be able to tell a significant difference in the fatness of the bead, see? All right, and so this one, I think I did this one with 10 strips. And there's where you get your saucer bead. Now remember, it's a half inch thick, but the diameter is different than this one. Come on, focus, focus, there we go. Um, because I added more strips to the pile. All right, all right, so let's do, how many do I have here? One, two, three. 
Let me cut these and I'll do one with five and we'll show you what a five is. So I'm going to cut. Let me pull that out. I'm going to cut these two strips real quick. See, you don't need a template for this. You don't need any fancy things with this. You could do this all with a toothpick. I just choose not to because it hurts my hands after a while. And I've been rolling hundreds and hundreds of beads lately. So no toothpick for me today except for to just do the little saucer ones as a demo. All right, so there's that one. So I have one, two, three, four, five. Just tamp them down on the board, five, to make sure you got them all lined up on it. They all have to be here on the end. You can't let any stragglers get out. All right, and because there's five strips in here, I might have to bump up. Oh, neighbor's dog, neighbor's walking his dog, and now my dogs have heard the dog. And what do I want to use? I really hate fat holes, but I'll do this one. All right, so that one slides nicely in there. I might could bump it down, bump it down a size, huh? Orange, green, green. Let's see if it'll fit in here. I don't know if they'll fit in here. Oh, they do. Okay, so you slide them all through, hold on to it, and start rolling, and put and give it a nice tug. I mean, don't jerk the paper completely off. You'll break it, but give it a nice tug. Anchor it right here on your finger. That's how I do it. Other people do it differently. Other people like to roll it this way, where you cup it in between this finger and this finger. You can cup it, and as you roll it, you can st you can still see how the bead is going. You can make any adjustments with one finger. All right, now we're getting to the part where you need to apply some glue. And then you're cupping it between your fingers again and just roll it along the seam and see how paper's pop popping up. That's why you need to paint the glue on the ends really well. And then you can go through like this and kind of pinch it and roll it through your finger like this so you make sure everything stays on that single line. Ooh. All right, so now, here we go. Remember, it's a half an inch. It's a half an inch this way, but look at the difference between how many pieces of paper you put in there. Let me put it in my fingers like this. There's probably not much difference between these two, but when you look this way, there is a little bit of a difference. Not by much, but there is a little bit of a difference. So see, if you only vary it by one piece of paper, you're really not going to tell the difference between the size and the beads. But when you start stacking paper, 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 then you're really going to see the difference. So you got... This, 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 this one, this one, this one. So this is all out of a half an inch strip. These, whoops, and don't let this happen to you. You need to put some kind of glue or something on here right away because the inside of this will pop out and then you're going to have a horrible mess and you spent, see it's starting to pop, it's trying to pop out. Uh, see, look, I'll show you. That's what'll happen if you don't glue it right away. Now you've got all these strips and they've come undone. That's what's gonna happen if you're not careful. So once you get it to this stage, you know, when it's flat like this, take your sealer or glue right away and try to glue on the top of it so it doesn't do this. All right, so you have this and you would have the other one had I not popped it and these are all out of one quarter inch strips. And the same thing if you use a three quarter inch piece of paper or a one inch piece of paper. The, you change the way the bead looks, but you're still getting your half inch, still getting your quarter inch, but the diameter of your bead and the shape of your bead changes. And that's a way to stay, save on buying templates from people off the internet or having to buy any instructions. All you need to do is stack your paper one on top of the other and start rolling. Alrighty, so that's it. I just wanted to come and 
give you a little tutorial about how stacking strips of paper changes the way a bead looks and gives you different kinds of beads. And all you did was you took a 12 by 12 piece of scrapbook paper, you measured, um, where did the other piece go? Here we go. All you did was measure out your stuff in one quarter inch, go back and forth, you know, skinny end, wide end, skinny end, wide end. And then if you want to do a half inch bead, you just skip it to make it equal a half an inch, skip a third one to make it three quarters, four quarters equals a whole. You will notice that the shapes of your beads do change the wider you make them here on the ends. It makes a whole different bead. And it didn't cost you anything to do this at all. You don't need any special instructions. All you do is just stack your beads one on top of the other, like these. This is, I think I did the millimeter side, centimeter side on the ruler. I liked the centimeter wide of the bead. And so I cut it really wide so the end was wide. And then it made a chunkier bead. Alrighty, so that's it. I just thought I would come and do this and show you that it is super duper easy to make a different shape bead just by stacking paper one on top of the other. And be careful when you glue it and seal it so you don't get that. Bye, everybody.